What is that one book that absolutely changed your life? I remember when I read Clan of the Cave Bear by John M. Owl. Oh. I was about 10 years old and I had seen the movie a dozen times before I found out it was a book. I devoured it in two days. I was hooked on the whole series for decades and it started my obsession with books. I will read anything but historical fiction is my favorite and it started with the Earth's Children series. Edit. OMG thank you Adol for all the love in award and comment form. That was an amazing surprise and so awesome to see how many other people are fans and totally understand my obsession lol. Thanks again you gorgeous peeps and I love Yaddle to pieces. My side of the mountain. I was young and have always camped and loved the outdoors, still do, but this book had such an exciting story. It's about a boy who runs away from home and plans to live in the wild on his own. He goes to a library and checks out a bunch of books on survival and lives in the forest. He even burns the base of a large tree and hollows it out and makes a living space inside. It's a super easy read but I loved every page. The Easy Way to Stop Smoking by Alan Carr I had zero intention to stop smoking when I started reading that book. To say I was skeptical about it would be an understatement. I was a heavy chain smoker. Smoked more than anyone I knew. But I went cold turkey after I read it. Three years strong. I have not had a single puff since finishing that book. If you smoke. You want to read this book now. I wish I read it earlier. Edit. Just wanted to plug our stop smoking for those who want support or information about stopping smoking. Breakfast of Champions by Kurt Vonnegut. The things other people have put into my head. At any rate. Do not fit together nicely. Are often useless and ugly. Are out of proportion with one another. Are out of proportion with life as it really is outside my head. There is a monster at the end of this book. It really led me on a journey to overcome my fears and deeply examine what it means to be a monster. Also. Pearling really hard against Grover to turn the pages helped me get buff. Really I was helping Grover face fears he was not ready to face. But we faced them together. Probably Redwall because it got me into reading as a child. And later writing. Where the red fern grows. It still has the best imagery of any book I've ever read. Must read for dog lovers. A brief history of time. The insanity and complexity of the universe was explained in understandable terms. Bonkers. Dune. Fear is the mind color. Also. A wrinkle in time. The girl with the dragon tattoo when I was 18. I didn't go to high school for reasons and this book made me go get my high school degree and go to college because I wanted to become a journalist because of that book. I graduated college last month. Thinking fast and slow. I had no idea how my over-reliance on my intuition was impacting my ability to think through tough problems. It has forever changed the way I look at the world. The end of Mr. Y. My ex-partner threw it at my face during an argument and knocked down and burst my forehead. So I left her and totally changed my ambitions in life. Kinda funny. Sometimes I see that book and scowl. And wonder what people think is going on. Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. An incredible sci-fi book that was written in the 80s and is a mix of apocalypse fiction. Socio-political critique and resilience completely changed my worldview and put me on the path to sustainable off-grid living. Which I'm really grateful for. Edit. I also equally love the sequel Parable of the Talents and there's an amazing podcast called Octavia's Parables that came out last year which goes through each chapter of the book. I recommend it for anyone thinking about starting the book or rereading it. It's like being in a book club that goes at your own pace. The Phantom Tollbooth. I reread it after hearing that Norton just a past. It may have resonated more with me at 32 years old than reading it as a child. The Stinky Cheese Man and Other Fairly Stupid Tales. Where the Red Fern Grows ED Me Up as a Kid. My kid refuses to read Bridge to Terabithia because the cover looks like the cover to where the Red Fern Grows and so it's probably sad. Moors. 
The first and only graphic novel to win a Pulitzer Prize. Edit. It is a book about a second generation survivor of the Holocaust retelling his father memoirs of the event. This semi-biographic book puts into perspective the whole feeling of absolute terror and give us an insight on the before-after situation. The Jews are portrayed as mouses and the Nazis as cats. Elaborating on the whole cat and mouse chase premise which demonstrates the horrors the Jewish felt. Although it is a graphic novel. Its images do really say more than words. It is to this day. The only book which has made me cry and feel hurt. It makes the whole subject feel very personal. The Long Walk by Stephen King. Greatly shows the variety of lives and some lessons about the life itself. Neuromancer. It somehow gave me hope. Might have been at a low point in my life. I really can't say. But I started collecting books again. Reading more. And I put up with way less from people. There's got to be a reason somewhere. The Kite Runner. Completely eye opening. And an emotional roller coaster. The Road. I read it before and after becoming a father. Drastically different experiences. And the world according to Garp. I read it when I was a kid and it was the first novel that made me laugh out loud and come close to crying in the same book. Ender's Game for sure. It was just mind blowing to my little 10 year old self. The Time Traveler's Wife. This was the first book I read on my free time in college. I didn't really care for reading but I figured I'd give it a shot. After that I fell in love and now I read a ton. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy got me into reading. Holes. The Dark Tower series. Those books helped me escape during some trying times. Terry Pratchett's I Shall Wear Midnight. It's a book from his famous Discworld series. I had no intention to read anything before I started a summer job with hell of a lot of free time. Had a typhoon back then so the internet was out of the question. I couldn't possibly believe a book can be so entertaining. The mixture of fantasy. Light text with a great plot and story. One of the best humoristic dialogues I have never seen even in a movie and simply enticing environment got me so into his writing style. And the best moment was when I realized he had at least 30 books from the Discworld. Highly recommending for. Like. Everyone who loves fantasy and a good laugh. The Hobbit. As a young child. I had always found reading to be pretty dull. This changed when I was 7 and got my hands on The Hobbit I realized that it wasn't reading that was boring. I just wasn't reading the right books. The Hobbit started my lifelong love of reading. Particularly fantasy and sci-fi a passion that I am now following as a writer. DR. Sleep helped me to quit drinking. I saw a lot of myself in grown up Danny that I didn't like. Discrete Mathematics 4th Edition. Never wanted to end my life so quickly. Edit. Wow thanks for the award. The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Calvin and Hobbes. No question. The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Just the first self-help book I read that really showed me that we can all improve as people. Helped put me on a path to reading more books that taught me all about finances. Health. Social skills. Etc. East of Eden. The ocean at the end of the lane made me see my adult self through the eyes of my child. I find myself more empathetic towards him and understanding of his fears and concerns. Even if I think they're silly. The book's perspective changes based on where you are in life. I'll probably read it again soon to see where I'm at. Depressive Illness. The Curse of the Strong by Tim Cantifer. Whenever someone tells me they are struggling with their mental health. I immediately point them to this book. It is the first one I have read by a health professional where I got the impression they actually get what it means to be depressed. And unlike most books by professionals. It's pretty easy to read at about 100 pages. It doesn't offer any cure all remedies. But it does help you understand why this is happening to you. So you can start to do something about it. The Body Keeps the Score. Mind. 
brain and body in the transformation of trauma. If only more mental health care specialists read this book. If only more doctors read it. If only more people understood the ripples of intergenerational trauma and abuse. One day in high school I had a Monte Cristo sandwich and my thought process actually was isn't there a book about this or something like it? So I went to the school library and found the unabridged 1000 plus page count of Monte Cristo. I didn't expect to finish it but I just started reading and I really enjoyed it. I ended up checking it out and over the course of the next month I completed the book and I absolutely loved it. Definitely my favorite book of all time. I still go back to read it from time to time because it just makes me happy. Unfortunately though it has nothing to do with sandwiches. The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Heinlein. It taught me how liberating it is to care about something you think is important. Berserk. Python for Beginners. The last lecture by Randy Pausch. I read it in my late teens and I really tried to take in as much as I could. He seemed like an incredible man. And I'm grateful that he shared so many life lessons with the world before he passed. I should read it again. The Dispossessed. By Ursula Le Guin. If you've ever wondered how to reconcile a desire for freedom and a desire to support the common good. Look no further. Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. Made me rethink the nature of religion. The Anne of Green Gables series. The love story between Anne and Gilbert is beautiful. But even more than that I loved reading about her friendship with Diana and seeing her gain meaningful parents in Marilla and Matthew. I loved reading about her misadventures. But also of how no matter what happened the people who loved her kept loving her. She finally found a family. Just an unconventional one. The Giver. I remember reading that book in 6th or 7th grade and just being blown away. I had never experienced a book like that before and it really had a huge impact on me. I'd also say the Harry Potter series because as a young kind reading those books I really felt like I was escaping into this magical world. Animal Farm by George Orwell. It changed the way I see society and government. Marcus Aurelius, Meditations. Catch 22. It opened my eyes to different types of storytelling and the benefit of sticking to a book. Brave New World. I think it paints such a more complex and all-encompassing picture of a dystopian society than 1984 did. Flowers for Algernon. I read it as a teenager. And it made me realize that my intelligence was a privilege. And that it didn't make me better than people who are less intelligent than me. 20. 000 Leagues Under the Sea, Jules Verne. Read it in 4th grade and it spurred a love and fascination for science that ultimately led me to teach biology and physics. Honestly? Oh the places you'll go by DR. Seuss. I was already a teenager when I read it, I'm from Brazil. So my English teacher would bring us kids books to practice English. I know it sounds silly. But it hit me hard. Seeing my daughter read it this year was amazing. Such a cool message. I'm embarrassingly basic but the Hunger Games. It got me into reading in grade school high school which really benefited my comprehension. Vocabulary and writing. The Stranger. By Albert Camus. It was the first time I identified with a character. I was 17 and I had read lots of books by that point. And I could really see myself in mere salt. I read it in school. And we had a discussion after everyone finished the book. I already knew I wasn't exactly normal but hearing everyone's reactions was eye opening. He's a monster. He doesn't care about anything or anyone. He doesn't have any empathy. He doesn't feel any emotions and so on. I had already realized that I couldn't say what I was truly thinking in order to blend with everybody else. But that book made me realize that not only would people never understand me, but they would certainly not accept me that way I am. Even if I tried to explain the way I think. The Kite Runner. Still haunts me. War and bullying is awful. Ah yeah. Also. The Outsiders. Stay gold. The Power of Now. By Eckhart Tolle. 
It changed everything about my view on how to live my life. The Holy Bible should be the only answer to this. Not because it's a fictional book. But because it is the word of God. It has changed many lives. Almost countless in fact. No book has had that type of power. I knew this was gonna be the most controversial comment lol the reddit hither mind. Quran? It's also the word of God to people. The Alchemist. Perks of being a wallflower. I'd say there are two books. The first is The Great Gatsby or so typical answer. But it was the book that made me fall in love with classic literature. The second is Brave New World. It was so beautifully written and made me realize that we're more conditioned to ignore the realities of our world than we think. Even those of us who hate the system can sometimes fall victim to our endless distractions. X. Technology. Mass consumption. And the idea that we should just be happy with the way that things are because we don't necessarily have the power to change them. The Road Less Traveled by M. Scott Peck. Recommended to me by my therapist when I was going through a pretty rough time in my life. The first paragraph really stuck with me. It says. Life is difficult. This is a great truth. One of the greatest truths. It is a great truth because once we truly see this truth. We transcend it. Once we truly know that life is difficult or since we truly understand and accept it as often life is no longer difficult. Because once it is accepted. The fact that life is difficult no longer matters. I can't tell you how many times I've read that paragraph. I don't know how or why but I just know reading Brave New World changed me. It's also one of the only books I remember and probably the last book I read and it was like 15 years ago. Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. My perspective changed Alad there. Lord of the Rings. I first read it in 8th grade when most of my friends were filling out and getting noticed by boys. The only thing noticed about me was that I was tall. Terribly skinny and would disappear sideways. LOTR made me realize that there are whole rich other worlds that exist outside of school and maybe I was just built more like a badass elf than a lame human. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I started reading the books for the first time back when I was finishing up my undergrad degree in computer science. I had just been accepted to grad school by the skin of my teeth. I coasted through undergrad and had a 2. 9 GPA, wasted a lot of time playing games and not doing schoolwork, curse you EverQuest. Dot. I remember reading one of the parts of the book where Harry was just dicking around instead of learning magic. It bothered me and I remembered thinking. Comma. Harry has the opportunity of a lifetime to learn some amazing things and do some cool. Instead. He is just whining and dying off when I know I will be studying like Hermione. And in that moment was when I realized how much I was squandering my own opportunity. I decided there that I would do better when I hit grad school. So I graduated with a 3. 95 GPA from grad school and learned a lot more about my field because I bothered to do the work. Moral of the story. Inspiration comes from strange places. Don't discount the lesson just because of the source. Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor Frankl. Great read that provides quite the perspective on life. Crazy inspiring too. The Gunslinger and the DT series as a whole. I had burnt out on reading because I was doing a history degree and man I just didn't have time to read for fun. After graduating I picked it up because I liked King and my dad had always talked about it. My gosh I was sucked in immediately like nothing I'd ever read before. Really opened my mind to a world of literature I had no experience with. I've probably read a hundred or so books in the last 10-ish years, not a whole lot compared to other people I'm sure, and have even written one which is where my journey has taken me. The Jungle by Upton Sinclair. I was always hyper optimistic and thought everyone could escape poverty if they worked hard and saved. Naive. Yes. But what can I say? I was young. Poor myself, so obviously I wanted to believe with hard work. I'd eventually be rewarded, and dreamy eyed. This book showed me that circumstances can you and there's just nothing you can do about it. 
and that both circumstances at birth and luck almost have more to do with your success than the effort you put forth. The Hobbit. Read it on a whim in high school and later fell in love with books. The Giver. Read it when I was around 11. And it was like reading can be fun. Cherub Class A. The Road. Without hesitation. I always disliked reading thanks to disliking a lot of writing styles and some auditory processing stuff that made it impossible to pay attention to silent words on a page. When I picked this book up, it was so dark, so dreary, so despairing. I don't know what changed in me, but I couldn't put it down. I've since discovered other authors with similar writing styles and realized reading can be fun and engaging. Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. The story of a Holocaust survivor. Really puts life into perspective and very well told story. Recommend if you're struggling with mental health for just seeing more positives in everyday life. The Way of Kings. Life before death. Strength before weakness. Journey before destination. IDK. So many were influential for me. I. Robot by Isaac Asimov, really got me into sci-fi. Mere Christianity by C. S. Lewis, rekindled my faith. The Pride Ain Chronicles by Lloyd Alexander, one of my first fantasy books. 100 AOSD Soledad, 100 Years of Solitude, Gabriel Garca Mirquez. This book made me realize the power of words and stories. It's incredible what he achieves in that book. Also through the book and magical realism in general I learned that reality is in itself magical. We just need to appreciate it. On the Road, Jack Kerouac. Harry Potter. Read the first book when I was 10. And I remember praying so hard for God to let me go to Hogwarts. My kid logic. If God was real then so was magic. Right? The Bible. It made me an atheist. Reddit comment. Journey of a Humpback Whale by Karen Jenner. Started my lifelong love of whales. I currently study whale song for the National Marine Fisheries Service. The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. It's a personal growth book that dispenses with all the normal heady bull and gets down to helping you truly plot your course in life. I read it when I was living in Tanzania for a stint and my life was indelibly different from before and after reading that book. Complex PTSD. From surviving to thriving, Pete Walker. Similarly. The series of unfortunate events. Got me into reading. 12 Rules of Life by Jordan Peterson. Sapiens. Go Ask Alice. My mom gave it to me when I was doing drugs. Skipping school. Running away. Just generally being a Thai person. The book really made me rethink my life choices and choose a different path for myself. I'm sure that I would have ended up like Alice if I didn't read that book. The God Delusion. I was put into Catholic school as a preteen and struggled for years trying to reconcile how the world was supposed to work. A classmate could tell I was in a bad place and it really helped me to put everything I was learning into perspective. Illusions by Richard Bach. Fahrenheit 451. Can't Hurt Me, David Goggins. This book taught me that most of the problems in my life can be solved by working on myself. It doesn't matter where I came from or started but it does matter where I choose to put my energy and time. If you put in the time and work, you can achieve anything the mind is set on. It's almost like a superpower. It's not easy but David Goggins taught me I have the ability to do things I never thought possible. Thank you David Goggins. Seriously. The Golden Compass. The Subtle Knife. And the Amber Spyglass will forever be my favorites. Edit. I know I didn't answer with one book. But read The Golden Compass and I dare you to not read the next book. The Outsiders. Beautiful story that opened me up to the wonders of the 50s and 60s in the western U.S. Absolutely loved it. Please read it. 
Whoever reads this. Man's search for meaning. Viktor Frankl. The Bible. But not right-wing nut jobs perverted version of the Bible. The actual one where Jesus teaches love. Compassion. Service to those in need and life without judgment of others. Anne and Say Boys by Neil Gaiman. I was extremely extremely shy and easily embarrassed by just about anything when I was a teenager very young adult. I related so much to Fat Charlie in the book and as he loosened up. I made it my goal to be less stiff and worried about embarrassing myself and realized it's okay to be goofy. Dave Ramsey. Total money Mackey over. Went from draining savings to covering bills and being worried. To paying off debts and saving investing half my paycheck. Took years to get to this point. But it got my butt in gear and made me make the changes I needed to make. Versus blaming things like politics and the man and not taking action. Now I have nearly a paid for house and a lot saved for retirement. The book helped me not only take action. But create a plan. The planning aspect has spilled into so many parts of my life, in particular. Nutrition and fitness. A Song of Ice SND Fire Series. By George R. R. Martin. About 12 years ago I was a super fan and joined in all the forums and blogs about it. I know got the HBO series had a sucky ending. But I'll live in hope that the books will have a satisfying conclusion. Yes.